We have seen previously that a circle contain two pi's worth of radians. The circumference of a circle is always two pi times the radius of that circle. The length an object has to travel to go around a full circle around the perimeter of the circle is the same as the radius of the circle multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi. Irrespective of the value of the radius of a circle, this relationship holds. The circumference is always twice pi at the radius. This gives us our value of distance within a circle. The circumference of the circle is the maximum amount of distance that we are interested in in circular motion. An object that moves around a circle will always move to a ratio of this circumference value. An object might travel 120 metres. If the circumference of the circle it travels around is 20 metres, then the object has orbited the centre of the circle six times. The radius of the circle is 20 divided by twice pi. Ultimately, the distance an object travels around a circle is linked to the radius of that circle because the circumference of the circle is linked to the radius. Time within a circle also has a limited amount of value. An object might take 60 seconds to travel around one loop of our circle. It might travel around our loop 60 times in one minute. It is still travelling in circles. If you were a person watching a race around a track, you'd be interested in the time a person takes to go around that track. But what if you were running a marathon around that track? The track is 400 metres long, and a marathon is 26 miles. That is a lot of laps of the track. Instead of measuring the runner's time around the track, you get bored and measure how many times the runner goes around the track in a set time. This is called the frequency. If a runner has a frequency of 1 Hz, then they'd be running very fast. The Hz is the SI unit for frequency and has a value of 1 rotation per oscillation. Sorry, 1 rotation or oscillation per second. Our runner would be going around the track once a second. For a 400 metre track that is an impressive speed, but for a 1 centimetre track it's a bit slow. The speed of our runner cannot be determined by the frequency at which the runner goes around the track. It is a combination of the circumference of the track and the frequency they travel around it. The time taken for a runner to complete one circuit of the track is called the time period. The time period and frequency are inversely proportional. The higher the frequency, the lower the time period. In linear motion, speed was distance divided by time. In a circle, distance is 2 pi r, the circumference of a circle, where r is a radius. The time taken for an object to go around the circle is the time period. This means that the speed of an object going around a circle to, for one rotation of a circle is 2 pi r divided by t. As 1 divided by t is frequency, we can say that the speed of an object going around a circle is 2 pi r f, where f is frequency. This gives us a value for speed called the tangential velocity. This is the velocity of an object if it were to suddenly lose the force holding it in a circle and fly off at a tangent to the circle. As we are talking about the speed at which an object goes around a circle, the velocity it would travel if it wasn't isn't useful, and so we must deal with only angles and angular properties.